evening, everyone, and let us begin our prayer this evening on the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. In the name of God, who loves us into being, of Christ Jesus, who speaks us into freedom, and the Spirit who moves us into holiness. Amen. Amen. The healing peace of Jesus, the abundant love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit is with you. And also with you. Good evening and welcome to our future church liturgy on this solemnity. As I was preparing to lead our liturgy this evening, I recalled the song of the body of Christ, the words of the song composed by David Haas. You may remember this song. We come to share our stories. We come to break the bread. We come to know our rising from the dead. We are called to heal the broken, to be hope for the poor. We are called to feed the hungry at our door. Bread of life and cup of promise, in this meal we are one. In our dying and in our rising, may your kingdom come. I think these words are appropriate for this solemnity and the readings we have for today. Because each week we come remembering this time of suffering in the continuing pandemic. We have lived our heightened fears and worries. It has been three weeks since the murder of George Floyd, which has resulted in the world changing outrage and protests that persist. And now it seems there is an outpouring of the spirit that is leading the world to coalesce around, around breaking the chains of this horrible injustice of racial bigotry. And are not there other hungers and thirsts in need of our action? In our first reading today from Deuteronomy, we hear Moses tell the people, not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We have been unable to receive from the table of the Eucharist in our liturgy, but we have been fed regularly from the table of the word. This too is the presence of God. In the second reading from Paul in 1 Corinthians, we will hear of our participation in the body and blood of Christ. And Jesus tells us in the gospel, whoever eats the flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them on the last day. But like the pa pandemic that has kept all of us from receiving the bread and blood of life, there will remain hunger for this real food and drink in many parts of our world without priests. Who then will bring the Eucharist to these brothers and sisters in our world? May our listening tonight to these texts in this future church liturgy inform our prayer. Let us pray. You have blessed all generations, O oh God, in Jesus, our compassionate Savior. For through Christ, you invite us into relationship with you. Welcome us to your table and provide us with nourishment in abundance. Teach us to imitate your unfailing kindness and to build up Christ's body by generously hand, handing on to others the gifts we have received from your bounty. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, bread of life, who lives 
and thrives with you, with us all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Uh, reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now, God, the Almighty, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep the commandments you were given. God therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your ancestors, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Do not forget God Almighty, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground. Oops, sorry, I, I went too far with this. It's parched and waterless ground who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your ancestors. The word of God. Thanks be, Thanks to, thanks to, God. be to God. And the psalm is, psalm resp uh, the res responsorial psalm uh, is, praise God, Jerusalem. Praise God, God Jerusalem. Praise God, Jerusalem. Glorify the Holy One, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For God has strengthened the bars of your gates and blessed your children within you. Response. Praise, Praise God, 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 Jerusalem. Jerusalem. God has granted peace in your borders and filled you with the best of wheat. Sending forth commands to the earth, swiftly runs God's word. Praise, Praise, God, Praise God, God, God in Jerusalem. God has proclaimed a promise to Jacob and statutes and ordinances to Israel. God has not done thus for any other nation. These ordinances God has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise, Praise, Praise God, God, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we though many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf, the word of God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Raise the gospel over the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Peace and justice bringing to birth. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise the gospel over the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Peace and justice bringing to birth. Blessed those who work for justice. Blessed those who answer the call. Blessed those who dare to dream of lasting peace for all. Alleluia, alleluia, raise the gospel over the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, peace and justice bringing to birth. A reading from the gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down 
from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. At this, the temple authorities quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the chosen one, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living God sent me, and I have life because of God, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Christ. At the time that I'm recording this video, the city of Chicago has been in shelter in place for just under two months. So faced with a rapid change in my daily life and routine, my partner and I decided to deal with that, as so many of others have, by taking on a fairly ambitious baking project. We decided to try to make our own sourdough starter. And it failed, spectacularly, three different times. As I watched our source of flour slowly begin to diminish, knowing that it was a very hot commodity and hard to find, I finally decided to phone a friend and try to figure out exactly where we were going wrong. Now, somewhere along the lines of being asked if I was uh, measuring the sourdough, the starter's temperature, uh, if I was making sure to feed it at exactly the same time, if it was finding, making sure that I was finding an ideal place that was both uh, not too warm, but not too cold, and in a sunny spot without too much direct exposure, I just started thinking to myself, I was not aware that I was in a personal relationship with a bread starter. Bread of Life Sunday looks really different during a global pandemic that limits so many people's ability to receive the Eucharist. For many of us, Holy Week and Easter Sunday came and went without being able to take part in the core center of, for many of us, our liturgical life, the reception of the body and blood of Christ. Without the Eucharist, how do we talk about what it means when Christ says, I am the bread of life? As I read the first reading today and heard that reminder and admonition uh, that man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God, I tried to take some comfort in it, but I just kept thinking it's just not the same. But then I remembered that at the end of the day, the Eucharist begins and ends in relationship. But that's where it all comes from and where it all returns to. I think it might be helpful for us to really engage this week's gospel reading if we have a sense of what's happening off screen, what's happening just before Jesus begins to explain to us what it means to be the living bread of life come down from heaven. See, at the beginning of this chapter, he's actually just fed 5,000 people. After enacting this miracle in typical Christ fashion, he heads off to pray in the desert. And when he comes back, the crowd meets him and specifically uh, tries to ask him where he's been and what's going on. And Christ fairly astutely says, I wonder if you're here with me uh, because you believe in me or rather because you wanna be fed. The group then uh, basically hedges their bets and says, ah, well, you know, uh, Moses was able to produce bread in the desert, so maybe that's a sign that you can give us that will help us believe in you. At which point in time, 
Christ says, I'm the bread of life. I am what has come here to nourish you. That then goes into a very long conversation where the crowd continues to be confused and keeps asking for bread. And again and again and again, Christ says, I'm the bread of life. I'm the living bread. It's through me that folks come to the Father. That admonition over and over again, that it was a relationship with Christ that people needed to be fed by. That's at the root of our faith. That's a reminder of where the Eucharist comes from. And so it's with that reminder of the center relationality of the Eucharist in the back of my mind, I've been trying to re-engage and remind myself of what the experience of the Eucharist is. I'm thankful in these moments uh, to have what Andrew Greeley would call the Catholic imagination. It's that sort of window that many of us tend to have where we're able to see God's movement and participation in all of life around us, right? God isn't this distant thing that we need to go out and find, but rather God is invested, incarnated in the midst of our own lives, inviting us continually to feel God's presence, to feel God's love, and to return over and over and over again into relationship with God. It's in these sacramental moments, right? These moments of grace that point back to the ways that we experience grace through the sacrament that I find myself being fed and being reminded of what the reality of the Eucharist looks like uh, for me and on a regular basis in my own life. I'm sure you can think of some of these moments as well. Maybe it was the first date that you had with uh, your special person in your life across a cup of coffee or a glass of wine where you really just thought this, this is it, this is this person. Maybe it's during meals at family dinners or uh, larger holidays when you look around and you feel known, you feel seen, you feel like you really belong. Those moments of being held, those moments of being seen and loved, that's on some level an echo, the reality of the sacrament. That is Eucharist, reminding us again to be in relationship to God. It's Christ over and over again reminding us that I am the living bread. I am the bread of life. You're coming through me. You're experiencing God through me because I'm in relationship with you. Because God so loved the world that he sent his only son to live our lives, to know what it was like to be human, and ultimately uh, to give his own life for us. But it goes beyond that, right? It's relationships are about more than just what we receive, but it's about how it's lived out. And so again, I think the words from the letter to the first Corinthians is a great reminder to us that the Eucharist isn't a spectator sport. We participate in the body of Christ when we break the bread. We participate in the blood of Christ when we drink from the cup. Living into a Eucharistic reality means participating in it. It means saying yes to that relationship again and again and again. It means trying to model the Eucharistic relationship that we have, that God offers us to everyone around us. The folks that we love, the folks that we are troubled by, the folks that we know, the folks that we don't. The Eucharist and its call to be in relationship to it is a challenge over and over again for us as believers, and perhaps more importantly, to us as a church in this time when we find ourselves so distant. So on this Bread of Life Sunday, how do we think about what it means to participate, to love those who seem unloved, to go beyond the boundaries of our own understanding of who fits and who doesn't? I wanna leave you with one final story. Many years ago, I spent Easter Sunday in Kingston, Jamaica, at a place where children who had essentially been abandoned to die in a dump uh, were able to live out their lives with dignity. In the middle of the mass, uh, developmentally a developmentally disabled child who had been essentially sort of making noises throughout the majority of the mass and encouraged by uh, his caretakers to stay quiet. At the very moment of epiclesis, as the priest raised the host above his head, stood up, pointed and shouted, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Then pointed to himself and said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And at the entire crowd and said, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. And in that moment, I knew that I had been fed more than I could have ever conceived. 
So friends, as Christ reminds us that he's the living bread come down from heaven, how can we participate in that reality? Okay, our closing prayer. Nourished by God's word and strengthened by this community, let us pray together. Loving God, Holy One, your desire is for our wholeness and well being. We hold in tenderness and prayer the collective suffering of our world at this time. We grieve we precious grieve supplies, supplies lost and vulnerable, vulnerable lives. We ache for ourselves and our neighbors. Our neighbors. Same, Same before, before an uncertain, uncertain future. future. We pray, we pray may love, love, not fear, not go viral. viral. Inspire, Inspire our, our, leader. our leaders to discern and choose wisely, aligned with the common with the common good. Help us to practice physical distancing, revealing to us new and creative ways to hold each other best, so we may care for each other in tender solidarity. Call us to profound trust in your faithful presence. You, the God who does not abandon. You, the Holy One, breathing within us, breathing among us, breathing around us in our beautiful yet wounded world. Amen. Amen. our blessing and may the god of hope fill us with every comfort and joy in believing may the peace of christ abound in our hearts and minds and may the holy spirit gift and guide us now and forever amen amen amen, amen. Our time of prayer and reflection is now concluded, and we go forth in the spirit of life and hope. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. <laughs>